Welcome to The Feminine Frequency, a podcast designed to awaken your feminine energy, elevate your confidence, and embody your authentic expression. I'm your host, Amy Natalie, women's empowerment coach, feminine embodiment guide, and author of The Feminine Way. Each week, you'll receive a new episode filled with feminine wisdom, inspiration, and practical tools to remind you of the power that already lives inside of you. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you don't miss an episode and go to the link below this video to download your free empowered feminine morning ritual. Ready to dive in? Let's do this, sister. Hello, Anat. It is so wonderful to have you here on the Feminine Frequency and to reconnect with you after many years of being mm-hmm. in each other's circles and spaces. Before we hopped on, you were like, didn't I meet you like right after you went through your divorce and like when you were living in San Diego? And yeah, yeah that was like a whole different lifetime ago. And I know that you've had many lifetimes since them as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I'm really excited to have you here because ever since I met you or even heard about your work, I've known that you create and facilitate really, really powerful transformation for your clients. And I feel like it's a really big gift for you to be here, to be sharing some of your deep wisdom and knowledge and expertise in the realms of inner child healing and overall like empowerment and supporting people on their healing journeys. So that's a little bit about what we're going to be diving into today. But before we get into all of that, I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, where you're at on your healing journey right now and maybe how you use inner child healing um, today in your practice after all of these years of having it as a tool. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that question because I definitely, um, it's very present for me. Uh, I'd say the way that I use it the most right now is it's really my access to manifestation, like to manifesting everything that I desire with velocity. Yeah, my connection to my feminine and to source. You know, um, it's been eight and a half years that I've had my business. And you know, as an entrepreneur, business owner, it's a roller coaster ride. And when I started out, I started out very much in my feminine as far as how I ran my business. It was very much in the feminine of just like asking, desiring and receiving and only doing the things in my business that light me up. And then there were a few years that I lost connection to that and unaware that I lost connection to it. Um, And then I'd say in the past two months, this remembrance, this coming back to, it doesn't have to be hard. And like, I'm done doing the things that don't light me up and, um, and, and sitting in the contraction, like as a woman or anyone really, when you're experiencing a contraction, just like a woman in labor, we're told to breathe, relax and focus on the thing in front of you and getting back into that and knowing how to be with the emotions and the energies that arise that, you know, we'll get into more of how I do that. Um, And then really just asking for what I desire and having it literally manifest in a matter of minutes to days. Mm, So powerful. Yeah. I love hearing how you are really using the tool of inner child healing with manifestation. And, you know, I think that would be a really great place to start for us to dive into because as women, we are primarily feminine beings. We all have masculine and feminine energy in us, but we are emotional beings. Mm -hmm. And when our emotions are kind of chaotic and they're out of control and when we, we, we don't have a container for them or we don't know how to navigate them when they come up, it can creates lots of instability in our in our energy field right it's like we've just got like all these emotions and we don't know how to navigate them and then it's like of course it's harder to manifest and to call in what we want because we aren't grounded we don't have that that stability right and 
I think that it's important to be able to tap into our emotions, but also to be able to know when they come up, like how do we hold space for our own emotions and how do we be with them? So if we can talk a little bit more about what that looks like when big emotions come up for people, whether it's in their relationships or in their business, or they just get like triggered throughout the day and then they're like feeling totally off track. And when we feel off track, we can't take inspired action because we're just kind of like stuck in the emotion. So walk us through a little bit, like when those big emotions come up, like what does that mean when those emotions come up and how do we hold space for them or how do we be present with them? Yeah. So first off your emotions, whether they are happy, joyful, horny, or they are sad, anxious, afraid, angry, that is your inner child. You really want to think of your inner child is your full spectrum of your emotions. And just like a child that walks into your bedroom and says, I feel dot, 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 like you want to be able to nurture and give that child exactly what they need to move through that. And so we get to come back to this remembrance that all of our emotions are just our energy and to give permission and validation for what it is that we're feeling. And that's why I say, like, to me, inner child work is the most powerful work because it is about your inner child, your emotions, and um, learning how to navigate all that. And there's, you know, certain emotions that um, our nervous system is very accustomed to. And for everybody, it's different. It depends how you were raised. If you're raised in a chaotic household, then chaos is your playground. <laughs> and you may actually look for chaos whereas peace and calm is where you feel the most uncomfortable and unknown. And so the power is really to build our nervous system's capacity to be with all of it. So I'll pause there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what I really want to highlight from what you shared is this aspect around our emotions are like our inner child asking for presence, asking for love, asking for attention. Right. And when we don't listen to them, when we ignore them, when we suppress them, they get louder, they yeah. try, they take up more space. And yeah. I guess I'll share also from my own personal experience, you know, as someone who struggled with depression and anxiety for over a decade, chronically just felt really kind of like a victim to my emotions where I just felt so much ups and downs all of the time. And when my emotions would come up, I would reject them or I wouldn't know how to handle them. And so I was kind of in this low grade depression for so long because I didn't know how to really be present with these parts of myself that were looking for my own love and validation, but I was rejecting them, right? Yeah. So when these emotions come up, how do we start to be with that part of ourselves, that younger part of ourselves that's acting out and that's wanting attention? How do we start to be present with that part of ourselves? Yeah. So uh, there's a lot there. Um, So I'll I'll start with saying that there's stages to it. And the first stage is really becoming aware. And a lot of times we think we're aware of what it is, but we're really just in like the top of mind thing. And it's circulating in our body, in our mind, and we get stuck with it there. And so one of the most simple ways to start to... uh, connect to it deeper is to get it out of your head and onto paper, especially if what it is of where you feel it is like I'm stuck in like analyzing or trying to figure it out or I'm, I'm, I feel like I need to call my best friend and just, you know, throw up all over her and like just process that way. There's a lot of noise in our head. So when you're experiencing it that way, You want to imagine you're calling your best friend, but instead grab your journal and dump it all out. No filter, just as you're hearing, dump it out. And then go back and circle anywhere that you wrote, I feel, I feel like, I am, dot, dot, dot. That is your inner child. That's the part of you that now needs tending to. Because when we don't do that, we're usually just hearing the loudest parts of us, which is usually our inner critic or our ego. 
-hmm. We're not really hearing that inner child. Mm -hmm. And so, again, for those of you that are very analytic, and stuck in your head, this is a good practice for you to then be like, oh, I feel like no one listens to me or I'm always going to be alone. Oh, okay, now you can take that and imagine that younger version of you walking into your bedroom and that's the part that's saying that. And then it's like, well, deeper, now another deeper exploration of the awareness is who modeled this to me? Whose energy is this? Is this mom? Is this dad? Because everything was learned and predominantly from our role models, our, our caretakers, mom and dad. And we learn it by what we see, what we hear, what we feel energetically, either how they make us feel or how they felt about themselves. And so deeper, deeper exploration of like what is really at the root of this, of this is exploring that. And, you know, mom is the model for everything self-related. So if you're challenged with something with yourself, most likely it's something that mom modeled to you. Dad is the role model for everything that is not the self, for others, relationship, the world. And sometimes you got hit with both. <laughs> and there was learning on both ends. And in that aspect, you always want to start with your, your mom and what she modeled to you there. And then reparenting that, giving yourself what you needed, what you needed to hear from mom in that moment, what you needed to receive from mom in that moment, giving yourself that. So that's the part that handles the reprogramming of the subconscious, of the mind. You know, to me, powerful work isn't just somatic work and it's not just mindset work. It's body-mind working cohesively together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I, I like to even look at that through the lens of the masculine and feminine too, which is like the masculine is the mind and the feminine mm -hmm. is the body. And we can't just approach it from one or the other. We do need both. And yeah, I think it's so helpful how you just differentiated that, like the sayings when you're like, I feel or I'm scared, those are coming from the emotions, which is coming from like your heart and from your inner child. And then the judgments and the criticisms is usually coming from the mind, right? The mm -hmm. ego. So that journaling and like getting it out on paper is so helpful to be able to see these different parts of yourself that might be speaking. And I love that you can start to see, oh, this is actually, you know, my little, my inner child. And this is what she's, she's afraid of right now. And like, yeah. now I get to tend to that. I get to yeah. be with that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then there's, you know, the, 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 what we call triggers, the emotions, the, the feelings that we have. And we a lot of times first go into labeling what that is. Oh, it's too painful or it's gross or it's overwhelming. And how do I, and then <laughs> the mind kicks in and says, how do I fix this? How do I stop feeling this way? Or I'm just going to ignore it or stuff it down or dissociate from it in some way. And that's where we lose the connection and, and the power of to, you know, connecting to that inner child, to our emotions and really moving through it. And so I teach my clients to get curious about it at the level of sensation, get away from the label and get curious about how it feels and where you're holding it in your body and naming it in as many sensations as possible. Like it's in my chest, it's the size of a golf ball, it's tight, it's hot, it's heavy, whatever that is. Because sensations are the language of the nervous system. And it's really your nervous system that needs to learn to process, digest, and discharge this energy and, 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 and go from it being something that is so unfamiliar that takes a while to very quick. And I'll share an example of this that I started noticing in the past three months that I've been doing a lot of cold plunges. When I first started cold plunging, it would take me about 60 seconds to regulate, to be able to have just a normal conversation while in the water. And now it's down to about five seconds. Five seconds in, I can have a normal conversation with you and be like, okay, we're here for another three minutes. Okay, cool. That difference is that my nervous system got retrained to regulate with this sensation called 
cold, <laughs> <laughs> sharp, <laughs> water. And it's the same thing with emotions that are not familiar to your own nervous system. So again, the example of chaos might be familiar, peace and calmness might be where you feel the most uncomfortable. The more you can not only observe it and name the sensations, but allow yourself to embody it, meaning allow, allow it to express through you and amplify it in as many ways that fit it. So I had a client the other day that I was taking through this for the very first time, and she was really afraid of uh, failing in this big project that she's in charge of at work. And she's like, this is, this is my mom, but it's also my dad. I go, okay, let's start with the mother part of it. And she's like, this is just who she was. This was her energy. And she was feeling it in her solar plex. And she was like, it just feels gross, feels disgusting. Like, oh, I don't want to be with it. And I'm like, okay, how much can you amplify that? Without telling me the word gross, how can I, if I was just watching you, know that what you're feeling right now is gross? So that could look like spitting into a cup or like shaking, all that. And the more she amplified it, the more her nervous system got to practice being with it. And then she would think about failing on this project and she'd be like, oh, it's back again. And for a few minutes, we did that. And then she was like, it's gone. I'm thinking about failing on this project, but I'm not getting this gross feeling anymore. I'm like, that's how quick now your nervous system can discharge it. Because it's not that we're not going to have these negative thoughts or beliefs or triggers. It's not that we're never going to, once you heal, you're never going to feel this again. No, you feel it, but it moves through you so fast, it doesn't get stuck. There's no trigger there. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have more capacity. It's about training your nervous system to handle more energy. And when it can handle more energy, things move through it so fast. You're more open to life's challenges and life's opportunities. You now feel your power to know that no matter what, I can handle it. It's just going to move through me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is what I find is the the key to somatic therapy versus like so many people have done talk therapy. And when I was doing talk therapy, it was so helpful at the time. Like I <laughs> sure as hell needed it. And I didn't know anything about coaching. I didn't know anything about somatics, but I was like, Thank God that existed because I really needed it. And I feel like there's a time and a place for it. And if we're just analyzing our emotions and labeling it, which is a really important step to be able to have awareness around it, it doesn't mean that we're actually feeling and digesting and processing the emotion fully. And it really is true that we have to feel it to heal it. And it is uncomfortable to feel it. Like, we have discomfort around the actual sensations in our body, but then we also have discomfort around expressing our emotions. Like most of us are used to just being quiet or not being weird. Like don't make that weird noise or that weird face or, you know, don't be different. And it's when we can start to let go of that in spaces where we feel held, where we feel seen, where we know we're not going to be judged. We can really go there, whether it's with rage or disgust or sadness, and really fully express and amplify the emotion. Like you said, it starts to shift on a somatic level. Yeah. And it's no longer just trying to like bypass it in your mind by thinking positive thoughts or, you know, just just looking at the thought itself, but it's going into the body and into the motion emotion, which is so powerful. I feel like this is really where the future of healing is too, is in the body. Yeah. In the body. But like I said, and the mind as well, because, yep. um, I've had clients that have done a lot of somatic work and being in their emotions and expressing it is like second nature to them, but they haven't done any mindset work. And so they're constantly getting hijacked by their stories, by their beliefs. And so it's, it's like, oh, I can move through that. Then the next day, I'm telling myself these stories again. And oh, I'm back in it again. And, and so it's so crucial that we also explore the root of where this belief came from and 
Um, yeah, and, and replace it, give ourselves new, new, a new script and therefore a new identity, a new character in the movie of your life that you now have chosen to play and to understand that fully stepping into that new identity is not going to happen as quick as moving the somatic energy. So yeah, you can move through the energy and the emotions in one session and feel amazing and feel the spaciousness and the possibility for now being this new way. But to integrate that, which is you know, the, the last stage of healing, to me, that is where lasting transformation happens. But you're looking at, on average, 18 months to fully integrate, especially if it's a big part of your character. If you go from being a people pleaser to being someone that now asserts boundaries and, you know, speaks up for herself, you're looking at 18 months. And you will fuck it up during mm -hmm. those 18 months, <laughs> many times over. And it's, can you have compassion for yourself and recognize it and keep going? Keep mm -hmm. watering that new way of being. Keep taking action in alignment with it. Mm, thank you so much for sharing about a, you know, an average timeline, which everyone's journey is totally different. And it also depends on what work you're doing and how you're, how you're navigating your inner landscape. But I think this is such an important piece because I think so many people as humans, we want everything to happen really quickly because we live in a quick fix society and we just mm -hmm. are like, okay, we just want to like do one workshop or we want to like go to therapy and it just be like everything changed. Right. But that's not how it works. And it really is this cyclical journey where things are going to come up again. Like even stuff that you thought that you healed or that you thought doesn't bother you anymore is going to come up again. And you know, I, I find this in, in my own life and I find it with my work with my clients that every time I'm about to teach something, I get like another initiation in that specific area of my life. You know, if I'm teaching about abundance or if I'm teaching about, um, you know, uh, pleasure, there's always something that ends up coming up in my business or my relationship where I actually get to go deeper into that. And I'll be like, oh man, like here's another layer. But that's also the exciting part is that yeah. we are always evolving. We're growing. We have the capacity to evolve and grow. And it's not just this like, okay, we get to this destination of quote unquote healed and then nothing ever comes up again, but you mm -hmm. do get better at yeah. navigating and it, it's, a lot faster to move through the triggers. Yeah. So again, yeah. it's, it's the nervous system. It's like, like cold plunging used to be something I did not look forward to. And like, oh fuck, now I'm just like, oh, in five seconds, I'm like, cool. So just five seconds of discomfort, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rest was fine. It's the same thing. We get to do that for ourselves and to um, keep as long as you have the right tools. Again, it, it never ends. It's just like, oh, now I have the tools to navigate through it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I'd love for you to share what you see with your clients, you know, as they are in that integration phase, or even as they're working with you, how does this nervous system regulation, the inner child healing and the mindset work, how does that help them to show up differently in their relationships or in their career and their businesses? Like what is, what are some of the biggest shifts that you've been seeing? Mm. Um, I'm thinking a few clients right now. I mean, I've seen everything from, you know, men that were afraid to make that commitment to the girlfriend that they love to being like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm going to propose to her to, yeah, leaving marriages that you're not satisfied in to, I've had CEOs literally step down as CEOs and people sell their businesses because, it just like, oh, that was my ego that wanted that business, not me. Um, to, I'm thinking of a recent client who runs a wellness center and was working 80 hours a week. She was just burnt out. To now, um, yeah, prioritizing herself and having that balance and delegating more. And now even looking at bringing in someone operationally so she could fully step away from it. And so everything, and some of these things people make decisions on literally at the retreat or in the program. Like I had a client at my last retreat 
that works for, um, works for Meta, works for Facebook, and has been with them for years. And she was like, on the last day, she was like, yes, I have a meeting tomorrow with HR. I'm putting in my two-week notice. So they take some massive action, or an action towards that, right? In its integration, it's all about taking action. It's all about bringing that practice. You planted that new seed. You got to water it. You got to mm-hmm. tend to it in the right amount of sunlight. So I'm always like, now let's bring in the masculine, right? What's the action that is in alignment with this? And then again, giving time to integrate it and taking an action that your nervous system could actually hold. So if it is, I've had clients that are like, well, I want to leave that job. Okay, so check in. If you put in your notice tomorrow, how would that feel? Too much. I don't know, I can't do it. Okay, what about six months from now? Oh God, really? I gotta wait that long? Okay, what about two months from now? I could hold that. So everybody's different. It's really checking in with like, what can you hold right now? And working your way towards it. So if it's not that, then what changes can you start to make? So so really having that vision and that plan and seeing what are the incremental steps and actions you could take Mm -hmm. if it's not the big ones yet. Yeah. And that action piece is so important. I feel like a lot of people get stuck in like the student learning phase or in the, like I'm in the healing phase and it's like, that's, that's only part of it. But the whole reason why we're doing this in the first place is so that you can make changes in your life to create a life that is more in alignment with your truth. That is more authentic to you where you can show up as your highest self and create a life where you're thriving. And that happens through action. And I know so many people get scared to take that action. And I think it really speaks to what you just shared about is like, they're not used to creating actions that are, that their nervous system can hold. Right. Exactly. Action doesn't mean that you're going to get busy and that you're going to do a lot for someone that is burnt out. It could actually be the action for you is to tell your team you're taking the next two weeks off and you're going to a resort spa for a week (laughs) and you're going to let yourself be completely taken care of so that your nervous system could reset itself from being burnt out. That's an action. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, whatever, what is it that you can handle and making sure that it's something that you can handle because otherwise you'll sabotage yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those coaches that are listening right now, you also get to be, um, let, let your client lead with this. You know, if you set out, if you tell them, oh, you should leave, leave the marriage tomorrow, you, you now realize that he's an asshole. Leave it. It could be too much for them. Same thing with healing. As coaches, when we're guiding our clients, it's like only go as fast as their slowest part. How quickly can they go into this past experience, trauma, whatever it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, There's, so important. That it's all with the nervous system, with that pace. Mm-hmm. So we don't get overwhelmed and then collapse or sabotage it. Yeah. And simultaneously, like you were talking about before, is like expanding the capacity for our nervous system, right? Which is the work that you were talking about is like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we get to keep expanding that capacity mm-hmm. for our nervous system so that we can take on, you know, more aligned opportunities, right? So that we don't stay in the same, just kind of like that comfort zone that feels safe for our nervous system. It's like learning how to be with that. Is there anything else you want to add there? Um, No, that was well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, really that comfort zone, when you said that, I was like the illusion of a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really just that, that comfort zone is just limiting you. And um, when we learn how to move energy and work with our nervous system and our emotions in this way, you're just expanding your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so powerful. 
Uh, I love everything we talked about today. Nervous system regulation is so important in our child healing and taking that aligned action. So thank you so much for sharing. And I'd love for you to share a little bit more. You mentioned your retreats. I know you've been running those for a long time. So just share a little bit more about, you know, what you offer and how our listeners can work with you. Yeah. Yeah. So for those that are just seeking their own healing, I have a foundational program, The Soul Collective, and it's really about your own journey. And that's open to anyone. Um, and then my retreats, uh, yes, I've offered many <laughs> over the past years, but I've really shifted my focus in the past year to um, training, to working with coaches and healing professionals that want to be trained in my method. And so my retreats now are only open to those that um, are either coaches or healing professionals or looking to step into that path, as well as my certification program. So I know that at this point in my career, where I get to make the biggest impact is by passing that method along and uh, amplifying the impact through others being trained in it. This is an industry that has exploded since COVID, um, which is beautiful because I think a lot of people really do care to help others heal. And it's an, it's a, a, I was gonna say dysregulated, it's an unregulated industry. And, um, and we get to do right by people by making sure that we um, have the right training to really get our clients the deepest results. So that is, that is where I hang out the most is in, uh, yeah, in that space now and certifying others. Um, mm. But there's a, there's space for everyone who wants to experience my work. Mm, beautiful. So for our listeners who want to connect with you after this podcast, where is the best place for them to find you? I hang out on Instagram. So if you follow me there, you will get a DM for me within a week because mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to know the human behind the follower and see how I can support you, whether it's me or someone else. You know, I have tons of resources. And um, again, if you're curious about uh, my programs, you can go to my website, trainingcampforthesoul.com. Beautiful. And we're going to link all of those in the show notes. Anat, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And I'm excited for everyone to come on over and follow you and continue learning from you. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, listeners. Thanks again for joining me here on The Feminine Frequency. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit subscribe and share it with a friend. For more inspiration, empowerment, and wisdom, come on over and follow me on Instagram at Amy Natalie Co. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.